I consider myself a Linux optimist. And I know that if you've watched my channel, you are thinking like, what, Matt, you're not an optimist at all. You're, you're one of the most cynical bastards I've ever met in my life. That's true. I do tend towards cynicism a lot. But I like to think of myself as someone who thinks that the future of Linux is bright. And I do. I think that a lot of people are going to use Linux in the future that don't use it right now. I don't know that I would say that it's ever going to be a market leader. I don't think that that's going to be true. But I think that Linux will slowly evolve as it has and continue to grow slowly and surely I think that that's just the future of Linux but I'm not so much of an optimist as to think that every time Windows dies we're going to see some large influx of new users and this myth has happened many times before so every time Windows goes out of service or a version of Windows goes out of service we have a group of Linux optimists who say this is going to be the time where those Windows users who did not want to upgrade to the next version are going to finally see the light of day and they're going to move on to to Linux and we're going to have a, a, a big growth spurt of Linux users out there it happened with Windows XP it happened with Windows 7, and it's happening again with Windows 10. Now, Windows 10 goes out of service in early 2025, and uh, 2025 is just a few weeks away, and I think that the actual end of service day is like April or something. I don't I don't use Windows, so I don't actually know, but that's usually when they do it, is, is early in the year. And because that's going out of service in early 2025, we have a group of people saying that the people who don't want to use Windows 10 will choose to use Linux. And for sure, some of them will. But it's going to be a very small amount. The vast majority of them will either do one of two things. They'll either stay on Windows 10, which is probably the most likely thing, or they'll just give in and go to Windows 11. That's just the way that it always works. And it's just the way that always will work because people are attuned to Windows. They're happy to use Windows. They're, they think they're stuck with Windows. They have certain reasons why they can't use Linux. They don't know Linux exists. Whatever the reason is, right? There's, there's always some reason, right? And that reason is legitimate for them. And that's fine. And that's the way that it should be. But somehow... There's a group of us here in the Linux community who del delude ourselves into thinking that this is going to happen this time. When it didn't happen the previous times, but this time is the time. It's the same reasoning behind the whole year of the Linux desktop thing. That has been around for 30 years. It's never going to happen. Like a, the, the year of the Linux desktop has already happened in that they won the server, right? They won Enterprise. That's the year of the Linux desktop. It's not really the desktop, right? The desktop has failed miserably if you ask the vast majority of people. Now, I personally don't think it failed because I don't think that the goal of the Linux desktop was ever to beat Windows. It was just to be an alternative, which in that case, it has succeeded. It is an alternative and it is a good alternative. So I think it has succeeded. But again, the whole year of the Linux desktop is one of those delusions that we have, or at least a lot of us have, and we have it over and over again. Like, oh, it didn't happen in 2024. Maybe 2025 is the year, right? The whole idea when Windows goes out of service that a whole bunch of people are going to fly onto Linux is just, it's a myth. It's a, it's a delusion. It's not something that's ever going to happen because that's just not the way people work. Whether that's a problem with Linux or, you know, brainwashing on Windows part or whatever it happens to be, it's just the truth of the matter. So if you hear someone tell you that Windows 10 is going to prod a lot of people onto Linux, you can know not to believe them because they know, even if they're spouting that, that it's probably not going to happen. In fact, I would bet money that it's not going to happen. It didn't, again, happen with Windows 7. It didn't happen with Windows XP. It's not going to happen with Windows 10 when Windows 11 goes out of service in four years or whatever it is. It's also not going to happen. It's just that's the way that it is. Now, the question then becomes, is there a way to make this myth true? Like, do we have an opportunity to change Linux in such a way that we can draw in these wayward Windows 10 users? And the answer to that question is no. I, I don't think that there's anything that we could do. Linux isn't going to change in the next few months. Linux is what it is and what it 
really always has been. It is a niche operating system that works very, very well. It's for people who can understand it and who want to understand it. And I'm not saying I'm not saying that to put anybody down. Most people could understand it if they had the interest to do so. Very few people are incapable of learning Linux. The vast majority of people just either don't know that it exists or have no interest in it whatsoever. And that's a situation that just can't be changed just because Windows goes out of service. There's nothing Linux can do about it. And as depressing as that might sound, it's not also really a bad thing because Linux doesn't need an influx of users similar to what people hope for. It's just not the trajectory that Linux is on. Linux is on a slow and steady increase in terms of user share on the desktop. That's the way it has been for 30 years. It will be the way that it always happens until Linux no longer exists. And overall, I think that that's probably a good thing because if we had, let's just say, 5 million Windows 10 users decided they were all going to come to use Linux at the same time, I don't know about you guys, but that sounds like a horrible thing for us people who have to support those guys, right? I mean, we want those 5 million people to use it, but s slow and steady, like, give us a chance to <laughs> build up to it, right? The support structure is just not there is what I'm trying to say. We don't have the support mechanism for that many brand new Linux users all coming at the same exact time. It would be a disaster or it'd, it'd feel like a disaster. I think that eventually it'd be okay I, because the vast majority of those 5 million people would eventually not use Linux because they didn't. Ha there's not certain applications here. It was too hard to install, whatever, right? We've talked about those problems in the past. So I, I think eventually it would settle down, but at, at the beginning, uh, Discord servers and forums all over the place would be experiencing this vast growth all at the same time. The servers would fail because we're not used to that much traffic, but also the people who are dedicated to actually supporting new users would be overwhelmed. It'd be a horrible thing. Now, 5 million people over the course of 10 years, fantastic, bring them on. I think that that's more likely to happen than all at once. So if you hear this myth, again, just know that it is in fact a myth. It's not going to happen. And in my opinion, I think that it's probably a good thing that it's not going to happen because we're just not prepared for that many people all at once. So if you have thoughts on any of this stuff, you can leave a comment in the comment section below. I'd love to hear from you. You can follow me on Mastodon or Odyssey. Those links will be in the video description. You can support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash the Linuxcast. You can also support me on uh, Ko-fi or YouTube. Those links will be in the video description. Thanks to everybody who does support me on Patreon and YouTube. You guys are all absolutely amazing. Without you, the challenge would not be anywhere near where it is right now. So thank you so very, very much for your support. Uh, if you too would like to support me on Patreon, you can do so. Patreon.com slash Linuxcast and for the rest of this month, you, if you use the code WINTER2024, uh, you can get 15% off your first month. So if you want to support me there and get a little bit of cash back, you can uh, do so following that uh, way of doing things. So thanks, everybody, for your support. I truly do appreciate it. You guys are awesome. Thanks, everybody, for watching. I'll see you next time.